Okay, so this is a lesson on 2-3, multiplying rational numbers, which means multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. It begins on page 71 of your textbook. Okay, so you should be looking in there and taking a look at the examples and the vocabulary and all those things. Let's go ahead and talk about multiplying fractions. It is very, very simple stuff. It's a very basic rule. Multiplying fractions and dividing fractions is actually easier than adding and subtracting because there's one thing you don't have to worry about. You don't have to worry about finding common denominators when you multiply and divide fractions. You do have to worry about finding common denominators when we add and subtract fractions, okay? So, multiplying fractions, very simple. The rule is top times top, bottom times bottom. That's it. Top times top, bottom times bottom, okay? So let's take a look at a few examples of that. Here's one third times two fifths. Top times top, bottom times bottom. One times two is two. Three times five is 15. Now, we always have to check and see if we need to simplify, okay? Can two 15ths be written in a simpler form? Can it be simplified? No, it cannot. So this is our answer, two 15ths. We must always write our fraction answers. Whenever we do anything, in fractions, our answers are always written in simplest form. Always, always, always. Now, always, remember, you have to pay attention to your integers. So this was positive times positive, so our answer is positive. Let's take a look at this set of fractions, though, okay? This is negative 4 ninths times positive 3 fourths. It's a negative times a positive, which means our answer is going to be what? It's going to be negative. So, this is going to equal negative something, right? Well, what's 4 times 3? 12. And what's 9 times 4? 36. So our answer right now is negative 12 over 36. Is that our final answer? No, it's not. Because 12, 36 can be simplified. It can be written in simpler form. Both of these numbers can be divided by, they can be divided by 2, they can be divided by 4, they can be divided by 3, but the biggest number, the greatest common factor that they can be divided by is 12. So 12 divided by 12 is 1, and 36 divided by 12 is 3. And so our final answer is negative 1 third. It does not matter if you put the minus sign next to the 1, next to the top number, or next to the bottom number. The fraction is negative, negative 1 third. Many times you'll find the need to simplify after you have solved a multiplication problem. But the beauty about multiplying fractions is you can actually simplify inside the problem before you do any multiplying. Why would you do that? Because it gives you smaller numbers to work with. If you work the problem out and then simplify, you might end up with some really big numbers. Then you're going to have to start thinking about all the factors, and you might have to follow multiple steps to get to simplest form. But you can simplify inside of the problem and then end up with smaller numbers to work with that are easier to multiply together and easier to do using mental math, correct? So, what do we call this process? We call it cross-simplifying. And what cross-simplifying means is, normally when you simplify a fraction, you find the number that the, you can divide the top and the bottom of the fraction by, and you divide, and that's how you simplify, right? Well, when you're multiplying fractions, okay, you can match any top with any bottom. And if there's something greater than one that you could divide both of them by, you could simplify that way. It has to be a top matched with a bottom. You can't match a top with a top or a bottom with a bottom. And so you can take the top of one fraction, for example here, 6, and match it with the bottom of the other fraction, for example here, 3. Well, is there something other than 1 that I could divide both 3 and 6 by? Yes, 3, correct? So now what's 3 divided by 3? 1. So I cross that out and I put a 1. And what's 6 divided by 3? 2. So I cross that out and I put a 2. And now I'm working with smaller numbers. Now instead of having to do 2 times 6, I only have to do 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay? And now instead of having to do 3 times 7, I only have to do 1 times 7, which is 7. And my answer is already in simplest form. Okay? Let's take a look at another example of cross simplifying. Here we have a negative fraction times a negative fraction. Once again, pay attention to your signs, okay? Pay attention to your signs. Negative times negative equals 
positive. So we know that our answer is going to be positive. But can we do any cross simplifying in the problem before solving the problem? Well, let's take a look. Is there something that both 3 and 18 can be divided by? Yes, 3 and 18 can both be divided by 3. So let's do that. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Okay? And 18 divided by 3 is 6. Okay? That's taken care of. How about 7 and 14? They could both be divided by 7, right? So 7 divided by 7 is 1. And 14 divided by 7 is 2. And now we can multiply. Much easier. Instead of 3 times 14, I only had to do 1 times 2, which is 2. And instead of 7 times 18, I only have to do 1 times 6, which is 6. Now notice, is my answer in simplest form yet? No, but I'm working with smaller numbers, and I hope we all know what I can divide both 2 and 6 by to get my answer in simplest form. I can divide them by 2. So what's 2 divided by 2? 1. And what's 6 divided by 2? 3. And it was a negative times a negative, so my answer is positive 1 third. Remember, your answers, when you're working with fractions, your answers must always be written in simplest form. Okay, so now let's talk about multiplying mixed numbers. Okay, The rule with multiplying or dividing mixed numbers is that you must first convert them into improper fractions. You cannot multiply or divide mixed numbers. You have to convert them back into improper fractions. So let's go ahead and talk about doing that. Remember, the way you convert a mixed number into an improper fraction is you multiply the whole number times the denominator and then you add the numerator and that becomes your new numerator and you keep the denominator. So 1 times 2 equals 2 plus 1 equals 3 over 2. Okay? Times 1 times 3 equals 3 plus 1 equals 4 over 3. Now, before we go ahead and multiply these, can we do any cross simplifying? Well, 3 and 3 can be divided by 3. So, I'm going to cancel these out. They become 1's. And how about 2 and 4? Both 2 and 4 can be divided by 2. Cancel these out. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. And now I have 1 over 1 times 2 over 1, which equals 2 over 1, which equals 2. Let's take a look at this next problem here. Okay? Negative 2 and 1 6 times negative 1 and 1 fifth. Once again, pay attention to your integers. Pay attention to what's going on here. I have a negative times a negative. My answer is going to be positive. Okay? So, negative 2 and 1 6, I have to convert to an improper fraction. 2 times 6 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So this becomes negative 13 over 6 times 1 times 5 is 5 plus 1 is 6 times negative 6 over 5. Now, once again, is there any cross simplifying that I can do? 13 and 5? No. But how about 6 and 6? Both 6 and 6 can be divided by 6. So 6 divided by 6 is 1 and 6 divided by 6 is 1. What's my answer? Well, 13 times 1 is 13, and 1 times 5 is 5. Correct? And it's a negative times a negative, so my answer is positive. But are we finished? No, because my answer is an improper fraction, which means that I must convert it back to a mixed number. And how do we do that? We do that by division, okay? Let me show you right here how we do that. We do 13 divided by 5. You learned how to do that a long time ago. How many times is 5 going to 13? Well, it goes 2 times. And what is 5 times 2? Well, 5 times 2 is 10. And then 13 minus 10 is 3. Now, when you first learned how to do this, you would bring this 3 up here and you'd put R3, 2 remainder 3, correct? But now, this 3 is going to come up as the numerator of your new fraction, and you keep 5 as your denominator. 
So 13 over 5 becomes 2 and 3 fifths. And that's how you multiply mixed numbers. Now let's talk about multiplying fractions if some variables get thrown in the mix. So in other words, in your book, if you look in your book, you're going to have to evaluate algebraic expressions. Just like we did before, except now when they tell you a equals something, a is going to equal a fraction. Okay? So let's take a look at one problem and see how that works. For example, this problem here. Evaluate a, b, c if a equals negative half, b equals three-fifths, and c equals five over nine. Correct? Well, let's remember, what does ABC mean? It's not the beginning of the song, ABC. No, it's not that, right? ABC means whatever A is times whatever B is times whatever C is. So now we got to fill in our proper values. So this becomes negative one-half times three-fifths times five over nine. Okay. All right. So now, what do we have here? We have three fractions. Can we cross simplify if we're multiplying three fractions? Yes. As long as you're matching any top with any bottom. Remember, you can't do bottom, bottom, or top, top. It has to be a top matched with a bottom. Okay. So do we see anything here? Well, first thing that strikes me is five and five. Five and five can be divided by five. So these cancel out. Five divided by five is one. Five divided by five is one. Okay? Anything else we see here? How about 3 and 9? 3 and 9 can both be divided by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now what's our answer? Well, I have here 1 times 1 times 1. That's a toughie. 1 over 2 times 1, which is 2, times 3, which is 6. But is my answer positive or negative? Well, take a look here. I had here a negative times a positive. Negative times positive is negative. So now here I'm negative. And then negative times positive again is still negative. So my answer is negative one-sixth. 